I made this table with these very interesting legs. Let me show you how I did it. The first thing I had to do was build a prototype uh, so I could figure out exactly how I was going to put these legs together. So I made a small version and uh, cut the joints, figured out how I was going to do it, and used dominoes uh, to put it all together. This uh, version has the angles cut at 45 degrees, um, both on the sides and then to in the joint between them. And it all worked, but I decided I was going to go with 30 degrees. That looked more like the photograph that was uh, given to me, and it just seemed to work a little better, not look so so pointy. My blanks were eight quarter stock, so I needed two of them to get each leg to be about three and a half inches square when it was all said and done. And for each piece, I ripped it down the center and then folded the pieces on each other so they'd match. When I got done with the milling process, I realized there was some um, sort of like holes or voids in the wood um, for whatever reason. And as you can see, there's sort of... Um, some of them are little cracks, uh, little pieces are coming off, and some are just voids. So uh, I was going to stain this wood black, um, so I eventually uh, just mixed up some black stain into some epoxy and filled the voids and uh, let it dry, and it worked pretty well, actually. Um, let it dry overnight, uh, made sure it was full and, and proud of the surface, and then I came back with a hand plane and... Uh, planed it flush and it worked out pretty good. In fact, in the final piece with the stain, you can't even see these parts. So that was pretty good. That worked, that idea worked out pretty well. The uh, weird shape of the legs makes it really difficult to sand. Um, and I knew that. So I uh, planed all the surfaces uh, as best I could to, you know, final surface prep before I made any of the cuts. And then I cut them 30 degrees um, to separate the pieces and made sure I had some marks on these so that I could tell which legs belonged with which. And I made two cuts, one to basically separate the pieces and then a, a very small cut to make the final cut so it would be uh, a nice smooth surface. So you can see once you take the top part and flip it um, 180 degrees, you get the bend in the leg. And so here I am marking it out for uh, for the dominoes. Um, basically just want to make sure that I get enough in there uh, to make it strong and that it won't come out the edges. So I put two at the, basically two at each side. So there's four in this setup right here. So here I'm using a domino uh, to cut the slots. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing funky about how you do this. Um, I did use the uh, fitting, not the tight fitting, but the one just above that. So there's a little bit of um, left and right play because I wanted to make sure that the, the joint um, at the point uh, lined up. And so doing that um, kept them in plane, but it allowed me to... Um, uh, to move them left and right. I guess you'll see me here doing this a little bit. But um, all in all, the joint came out pretty good and um, went together really well. And I just used some tape to secure it. Um, I did try some different ways of clamping it up, and it was really more work than it was worth. And uh, in the end, before I glued this, I used some tape, and it seemed to hold it in place. And so when I finally did the glue up, that's what I did. It worked out fine. So once um, these joints uh, dried, I went and I cut this other uh, joint that's going to join them. You can see I got a couple cuts in there already, uh, just sneaking up on it, and uh, set the bevel at 20 degrees and just set the um, angle of the miter gauge at uh, 60. And then uh, didn't go all the way through, so I used the hand saw to uh, cut the rest off and then a hand plane to clean that up and then set my uh, fence at uh, 20 degrees on the uh, domino and then referenced off the glue line um, left and right there's some indicator marks on the domino that allowed me to get it uh, and 
with the left and right setting a little wider you can see it's it's pretty easy setup to do overall and then I was test fitting it uh, with these two first I just wanted to see how well it would fit I was gonna put a third one in uh, but I wanted to see if how how well these would fit first before I did that third one and I could see if that third one was causing any issues and it worked out fine so apparently I didn't film putting the third one in um, you can see the domino standing up in the back there I used that vertical um, plate um, as a reference there's a little notch in it, and I use that to reference off the same glue line and reference off the same um, sort of top face there so that uh, I wouldn't get any offset issues uh, coming from a different face and um, it was a little bit um, weird the way I had to hold it to get that in place but overall worked out pretty good and you'll see the joint comes together real nice and so there's three in there and that seems to hold it really well and then I just uh, used a band clamp to get it all put together Here's the base that the legs screw into. They're all finished, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's basically just some um, some planks that go uh, left and right to secure the legs to, and then some uh, fairly light pieces. They're about, I don't know, an inch and a half uh, tall, and that just connects this base piece. You can see there's some slots in there for screws to go into the base. Um, I have some uh, threaded inserts into the uh, table, uh, underneath the table. And so that's just screwed together. There's nothing interesting or, or difficult about that. There's no dados or anything there. And then this is the underside of the table. Just, uh, you know, wood planks glued up. Nothing special there. I cut the table extra wide and extra long and then glued those pieces on to the bottom, which you're seeing now. And that gives the appearance of thickness without having to have a really heavy table plus it allows the legs to ins inset a little bit into the base or into the bottom of the table so you don't see that uh, that base platform that I made and so what I'm doing at this point is just uh, routing a bevel um, so the table doesn't look so chunky here's a close-up of the bevel and you can see with the cut off being put on there it, the grain matches perfectly and it looks really nice and then here's the uh, the base in place and I just put some cleats there so it'll line up so the holes will line up with the threaded inserts so I finished the whole thing with um, an, an ebony stain which gives it that dark dark color and um, a couple coats of uh, spray on shellac just to sort of seal it in I find that if you use a wipe on it tends to wipe some of the stain out and then uh, polyurethane over top of that I did uh, two coats on the legs and I ended up just doing one coat on the uh, top because I had um, a couple of coats of shellac on there so that's it thanks for watching